Hello, my name is Raquel and I'm a lead naturalist here at the Environmental Nature Center. Thank you so much for tuning in to our live Facebook remote learning session. Um, we are having these throughout the weeks um, up into the coming month. And if you would like to look at the other programs that we're going to have coming up soon, you can go to the um, website and look at the calendar. Our website's uh, encenter.org. And we also post on our social media constantly about what we have coming on and what kind of resources we have for you to connect with nature. Um, I know that I'm missing being out in nature right now, and so we want to make sure that you are able to connect with us even virtually um, and be part of our community here. So today we're going to be looking at bird beak adaptations. Um, and uh, adaptation is something that an animal has on its body or maybe something that it does to help it survive. So if you think about um, what the animal has on its body, maybe it has thick fur, maybe it has feathers, or you think about something that the animal does, maybe it's behaviors, maybe it lives in a group, maybe it um, is, lives solo, and so animals do different things to help them adapt and survive in their habitats. And of course, um, throughout this um, live, if you have any questions about what I'm talking about or what we're doing here at the Nature Center, feel free to put it in the comments. Um, I have our other lead naturalist, Heather, here, who will be looking at those comments and uh, telling me any questions that people have as we go along. So feel free to uh, interact with me here and, and ask questions just like as if we were in a, a live video. So. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to look at bird beak adaptations. We're going to look at some shapes of bird beaks and how those help birds survive. And then we're going to do a little demonstration of different types of bird beaks and things you could do at home even to look at bird beak adaptations. So the first kind of bird beak we're going to look at, this is an American white pelican. And you can take a look at that big beak with a special kind of spoon here and that bird has an adaptation for its beak for scooping so if we think about what does a bird need to survive a bird needs water a bird needs shelter and a bird needs to eat so these birds have different beak adaptations to help them eat so that pelican we were looking at has that spoon uh, shape, or scooping shaped beak. So it's going to go down in the water and it's gonna scoop up the water um, and grab the fish from there. So we're gonna do a little demonstration. So here I have a spoon. So you think about that scooping um, tactic. And let's say I have the water here and some fish or maybe some worms. And let's see, let's take a look. What is this bird's beak adapted to help it get? It's pretty hard for me to grab these toothpicks, but what about these fish? And I can put it in the bird's mouth, easy. The next bird beak we're going to look at, this is a California quail. So we can take a look at its beak. It's short and strong and this quail's beak is perfectly adapted to help it eat seeds. So certain birds have those really strong beaks and they're going to be able to crush seeds um, and get that kind of food. So if you think about like a clothespin, it's, the tip is short and strong. So if I had some seeds here that we're gonna have bottle caps represent look at that bird would be able to grab those seeds and get it and we'll put it in the bird's mouth and this activity that i'm doing here um, in front of you we actually were going to have a lesson plan for you to do this same activity at home with um, the pictures of these birds and different types of beaks. So if you want to continue this activity later or to share it with other people, it'll be on our website at encenter.org on our nature resource page. So the next bird beak we're going to look at, this is from a hermit thrush. And these birds 
have a special sharp pointed beak that is perfect for eating insects. So if you think about like these tweezers here, sharp and pointed, and they are able to go through in the dirt and perfectly pick up that worm that we're representing as a toothpick here. The next bird beak adaptation we're gonna look at is from a hummingbird. So this is a hummingbird you can find here in Southern California. And we think about what do hummingbirds eat? Hummingbirds are going to get nectar from flowers. So they have that very long pointed beak to help them get into a flower and drink that sweet nectar out of it. So um, if you think about like a straw like I have here, so maybe um, if you had some water, you're thinking about how you're going to get that nectar. And the hummingbirds actually has a very special adaptation. So it has that long beak, but then also a long tongue. So it almost drinks up the nectar like a dog drinking water. The next bird I wanna show you, so this is a snowy egret and they have what we call a probing beak. So it has a very long, slender beak, similar to the hunting, hummingbird that you could also consider a probing beak. And you could think about that similar to these chopsticks I have here. So the snowy egret is going to run around in that marsh and they are trying to get the different things that are in the mud. So think about maybe it might be some crustaceans in the mud. So I'm gonna go on my activity, I'm gonna pull out these, just like you're grabbing the crab's leg. So it's very easy for the, that probing beak to grab things out of the mud. Again, if you have any questions about bird beak adaptations or about animal adaptations in general, feel free to put those questions in the comments. Be happy to address them here today. All right, the next kind of beak we're gonna look at this is the nut owl's woodpecker. And this is an example of a beak that is for drilling. So it's very sharp, almost like a chisel. And that woodpecker is going to be able to peck and chisel at the wood to get the insects that are inside. So its beak is perfectly adapted to help it get insects out of trees, which is pretty special. And then also, to put, get other things in the tree as well. Another type of beak I wanna show you is from the Northern Shoveler. So this is a type of duck. And ducks have a special beak called a filtering beak. So you can see um, the way that it looks is very special. So that duck is gonna go through the water and it's gonna pull in the water and different plants and animals that are floating in the water, the bird is able to pull it into their beak and eat it, kind of similar to how a baleen whale goes through the water and it filters the food out of the ocean water. And then the last type of beak adaptation I wanna show you today is a beak adaptation for tearing meat. So this is a red-tailed hawk um, that you can find here in Southern California and they have a sharp hooked beak that's going to help them tear meat. So these are carnivorous birds and they, this beak really helps them when they're trying to eat their prey. So I hope you enjoyed um, this video today and taking a little bit of time to look at bird beak adaptations with me. Um, again, we think about an adaptation is anything an animal has, any characteristic of its body that helps it survive. So you could think about your favorite animal um, and think about what does that animal have on its body that helps it survive in its habitat, whether it helps them get food, helps them hide from prey, or maybe it helps them with uh, survive from the weather that's in that habitat. So that's just something we can think about and maybe journal about. If you're at home and thinking about a project to do, you can draw a picture of that animal and maybe think about its adaptations. Or like I said, if you wanna do an activity like the one we demonstrated today at home, you can take a look. We're gonna start putting nature-based lesson plans on our website at ancenter.org. Um, and there's even more nature resources for you there as well. 
So continue to look at our Facebook posts and at our calendar and tune in to our next uh, remote learning session that will be on Monday at 1 o'clock. All right, everyone, thank you so much. If you have any other questions, continue to put those in the comments.